Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy Scoville, and you're on the lifeboat. What's happening? Hopefully, you're having a, uh, a good Saturday morning. Kick off this weekend and uh, do it right. Don't you love it when your significant other says, we need to talk? Right? Um, it wasn't always, you know, even before that. It, it's, it starts before the significant other, doesn't it? It starts with, uh, it starts with mom and dad, first girlfriend, first boyfriend, whatever. Uh, everybody... If somebody says we need to talk, never, it's never a good thing, is it? I mean, it's almost always 100% of the time a bad thing, isn't it? It's not today. It really isn't, but it almost always is. Charlie Murphy, good to see you. What's happening, Charlie Mullins? Cat's eyes, good to see you. Rona, how are you? I do know his last name, people. It's, uh, it's a bit of a joke. Tree hugger, somebody corrected me the other day and said his last name is Mullins. <laughs> I went, oh, I'll be damned. I, uh, it is Mullins, isn't it? Uh, Rhonda, good to see you. Tree hugger, Doc, how are you? Sandra Howers, Anthony Powell, I'm glad you're here, bud. Tony B, good to see you. Hey, Tommy Stiggs, good show this morning, Tommy. Really enjoyed it. LNG, good to see you. Aaron, I popped my head up this morning. Uh, Tommy said something. I, I really do try to, to uh, lurk more than uh, more than not, but uh, this morning I had to pop my head up because, uh, you know, every, uh, as a content creator, when you sit in front of the uh, the, the camera, you have those days where you think to yourself, you know what, man, this is what I do. And if you don't dig it, sometimes you just need to hear someone say, hey, man, I do dig it. I like the format you do. Kind of popped, had to pop up for that. Pajama Pixie, I was just I was just thinking about you. It's funny. When I use a journal, uh, I either use a journal next to my bed, which is uh, Mary, the, the, the journal I'm currently using next to my bed, Mary Jones made. But if I'm my walking around journal, Several now that have made are made by uh, people that uh, that mail them in. A lot of times, the way they do things with packages, I can't tell who sent me what. I thank you to all of you who send the card because it really helps, and then I don't feel like an idiot and I can say thank you, Pajama Pixie. Really, and I do use that constantly. The nice thing about that one is it closes, and I can put it in a pocket. It'll actually fit on the inside pocket of a leather jacket, which is incredible. But I have to have a uh, something with me. I have to. My head has zero. Um, I have nothing residual from that at all. I have, uh, and that's good. Um, Tony Shooter, good to see you. I don't know if I've ever said hi to you here, Tony Shooter. I know that I've seen you, uh, over on, um, on Reese's channel. I don't know that I've ever said hello to you here, but I'm glad you're here. Hey, Kelly B69. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Midnight show. It's my girl. Well, back and forth this morning. Good to see you. Tina Marie. Glad you're here. Nikki Spencer. Ben, bacon bits. Now that we've run off everybody who can't stand when I do a uh, roll call. Hey, Scoob. Hey, Audrey Gore. Joel. Uh, good to see you. What's up with you? Uh, so let's get it underway. We'll, we'll get this thing flying. I can tell what's going on with you by the number of emails that I get after any given show, right? Um, Thank you, Ari. Good to see you. Uh, I can tell by the number of emails I get. If I get an email that says, hey, man, um, you hurt my feelings last night, and I get three of them, I hurt the feelings of a lot more than three people. If you, you follow what I'm saying, you can, you can usually just go through and find out quite a bit by reading your emails, Bueller, <laughs> Bueller. Uh, but by, by paying attention and keeping your, uh, your finger on the pulse, you kind of get an idea of what's going on. I got um, about nine emails last night and I didn't do a show last night. So that's a little, uh, a little concerning. And I, I think people walked away with a, um, with a feeling from last night's show that I think I need to fix because I don't think that it's correct. And it left me a little uncomfortable. Um, if you watched last night's show, we it was pretty typical, um, you know, Tommy and uh, and Reese show. You know, we uh, we talked about some heavy stuff and we clowned a lot, which is what we do. I think it's why people uh, like to watch the two of us when we're live, because we talk about really heavy stuff and we go places that I would imagine uh, most content creators don't want to go and don't go to, and then we clown around enough so that everybody laughs, and we usually try to. Uh, um, keep a good balance of the boat, right? Uh, recently, we've done some pretty heavy stuff on the boat where we've talked about Reese's past. Last night, Reese, um, we, we were talking about hypotheticals, and which is something we talk about all the time when the two of us get together. And one of the hypotheticals was whether or not 
uh, you know, we, we have a, a very close friendship and how quickly that could be destroyed if we were to, uh, to be more than friends. And one of the things that she said was based on um, the fact that she grew up in a cult right? Different language, different um, different life to be sure. And she talks about how at a very early age, she literally had to, you know, her, while dad's drilling um, Scientology crap in the kitchen, she's got to do this in, you know, that, that speak, that language. And if she doesn't, then he gets angry. And I have a hard time, you know, when she said, I would never, ever trade, you know, because of the prison thing. I said, oh, boy, oh boy, neither would I. I can't, you know, at least I was an adult, right? When when somebody was supposed to be protecting me, I was protected. My parents did a beautiful job of protecting me when I was a kid. What landed me in prison was my fault. And that's a good thing. It really is. Because there are there are a lot of people that can't say that. There are a lot of people who are in prison because of things that their parents did. I met those people. I wasn't one of them. You know, I went to uh, I went to prison behind things that I uh, that I did that I that I take responsibility for, right? Which is maybe a little bit different than than a lot of guys. But the point is, uh, we we have two really different life experiences, right? And two different vocabularies because of it. Not brought up things like the word punk, which in prison has a, a meaning that it's not just a disrespectful term. You understand? There is an actual meaning, and I'm not going to get into the definition of it. It is the biggest insult that you could do uh, to a, a man in prison. That's the big one, right? Um, and then the, uh, the one rung down would be the, uh, the term used for a female dog. That's, that's one rung down. And it's not, there is a whole definition behind that too, which doesn't need to be discussed, but it's also a very, very derogatory uh, thing. Um, so we started talking about those things. And she said that it would, it would concern her that there are things in... Uh, in my vocabulary and in my past vocabulary that can set someone off by hearing a word, that's a frightening thing. And I think the, the way that the, uh, the question was asked, hello, Matrix, um, great to see you. I am doing well, thank you. Uh, the, way that, uh, the way that it was asked and answered, I think probably the way I answered it may have been one of the, the problems too. But I think that uh, it led people to believe that uh, that she's frightened of me. And I have talked about on the show many times how one of the reasons that um, I have seemed to bond with second gens in a way that is probably different than I have um, bonded with other people that I've met online or whatever is because there's never been a look of judgment. And when I say never, there have been two that uh, are different. But... And the vast majority of the ones that I've met don't get that look, you know, the light switch that gets thrown when they find out who and what, what you are, what you've done, where you've been. Um, and because I've had that conversation, people came away from last night's video thinking that Reese is afraid of it. And this disturbed a bunch of people, right? It's also not even remotely close to what happened at all. Um, I've met Reese in person. Right before I met Reese in person, she knew I had robbed banks. She knew I had been to prison. We had had uh, very long conversations. Um, uh, Frankie Figs, yeah, inside that word is absolutely worse than uh, than you could you could drop the c word inside, and it's not going to get anybody to do anything to you. Um, it's it's a word that gets thrown around in there, but the uh, the p word is an instant fist fight. It is a word that has been. Um, Yes, afraid of me. And she's not. Of course she's not. Of course she's not. But nine people, um, nine people in a very, in their very caring way wanted to reach out to let me know that they're, they're not afraid of me like Reese is. And I just wanted you all to know that Reese isn't afraid of me. But I, I figured we would nip this crap in, 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 the, uh, in the bud before I get any more emails like that because it's just silly it really is uh yes absolutely please do come aboard love it cindy welcome um it's thank you tommy Stiggs. uh it's it's very interesting stuff when i'm on with reese it really is it's interesting to me because reese will say things other people are afraid to say right it's not that other people haven't thought the exact damn thing 
right? But Reese will say it, which really should show you that Reese is really not afraid of me. <laughs> In fact, there may be nobody who is less afraid of me than, uh, than Reese is, right? Reese will literally have conversations with me that no one else on planet Earth will ask me because they're going to be afraid to hurt my feelings. Reese is very confident that she can ask those questions without hurting my feelings. And she did not hurt my feelings last night. So for all of you that really wanted to protect me, I really appreciate that. But uh, she didn't hurt my feelings. I promise you she did. And, and if she did, here's this. If she did, she would have heard about it. I promise you. And you would have watched it. Honestly, that's, that really is, I think, why people don't tune out is because we're willing to, to go down, uh, you know, really slippery slopes where she might step on my feelings while everybody's watching, or I might step on hers, right? Didn't happen yesterday, I promise. But if it did, we would have worked it out right there live. And that's kind of what we were saying yesterday about kind of keeping really short accounts with one another. Starfish. Who isn't? Honestly. Honestly. Who isn't? Holy hell. Boy, I am. You know? Boy, I am. And I don't know. It's a, it's a razor sharp edge right there. Honestly. Gotta be careful with those. That's a razor sharp edge. It's a it's it's sometimes um sometimes a fine line between the acknowledging the painfully obvious like virtually all of us are a hot mess to maybe sounding a little mean and it's not something that we ever want to do I promise. right we live we live in a world where you know what on purpose on purpose people go out of their way to be cruel a lot we need to do everything we can to make sure we don't do it by accident because the group of people that come here, I assure you, would never say anything on purpose to ever come across as mean or hurting anybody. Nobody. It's just not that kind of people. It's not the kind of crew. It's not the kind of people that this kind of content attracts. It's not the kind of people that this kind of crew attracts. The live chat polices the crap out of this boat. The wrenches do a fantastic job, but it's the subject matter. Honestly, most trolls can't stick around long enough to be trolls because it's just not that much fun for them, right? We talk about really heavy, heavy stuff. It's a very, very unusual um, audience, right? My people were broken. Um, I think one of the things that probably impresses me the most about all second gens is that... Uh, they are, all things considering, less broken than anybody I've ever met. Again, all things considering. Are they a hot mess? Virtually every one of them. I don't know how they couldn't be. But with every advantage of being raised by the kindest, most loving and caring people on earth, I ended up with three prison sentences. If I had had Reese's upbringing, I'm fairly confident I would be an axe murderer right? Or a serial killer or worse. I don't know what I would have become because I had love showered upon me. I was treated beautifully. I didn't want for anything and I was protected to beat hell. And I ended up, you know, none of my other siblings did, but I ended up really jumping the rails. I am wildly impressed at how uh, much of a mess she's not, considering, uh, you know, that as I peel the onion, it's she said something yesterday that I found one of the, uh, thank you, seventh, 14 months, my goodness. She said something yesterday. Um, I don't know, every time, every time we, uh, every time we, we do um, interviews together, we, we kind of peel the onion a little deeper. But yesterday she said, um, I've taken a, a walk through uh, Tommy Scoville's head which I think is a, uh, a funny thing a funny thing to say. But do you know what? It is what you do. If you, if you take the time to actually ask some pretty deep questions of people, and um, this is certainly an experiment that we're doing with the whole world watching, but we're doing it. 
And if you take the time to ask really heavy questions of people, and then if you can stop talking long enough to hear what they say, uh, then you you begin to get an appreciation, right, for just how unbelievable um, some of these people have ended up, how they have turned out with zero help. Can you imagine saying, you know, my four-year-old is a, is, is a fully grown uh, human whatever or Phaeton whatever, but this is, this is an adult just in a kid's body. I don't need to. I don't really need to do anything to provide. And if this kid wants M&Ms for, uh, for dinner, who am I to say M&Ms aren't a good dinner? I mean, this is the, you know, I can't, I can't do this. This is, this is a, uh, well, I got no right. <laughs> I got no right. Fully uh, fate and human, whatever, you know. Did you like that? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. Thank you so much, Shimmy Dugawabi. Dugawabi. You are appreciated, man. That's five more people just turned green. Look green, right? You know what today is? It is St. Patty's Day. And don't worry, I'm going to do a St. Patty's Day show with green stuff on. But I'm actually wearing this shirt because a friend of mine loves it. I'm doing it to make my friend happy. Uh, I think that the uh, the vast majority of people that uh, that tune in to watch us um, get it. Um, now, some of it, I'm going to be real honest, some of it is... Uh, uh, some of it is people that would just like to uh, be a little bit nicer than um, than the last person. Right? I'm a little nicer, right? I would never treat you like that. She didn't treat me like that. I appreciate it. But uh, honestly, people, um, this may come as a shock, but I promise you, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen with you watching because we uh, because we really don't. Um, hold on one second. Squirrel on. Get down off of that. Sorry. Hold on. Hey, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Here you are. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm sorry, people. It was a cat emergency. My uh, my cat decided it wanted to eat something that cats should not eat. Sorry, something that is germinating. Got a big pit off of an avocado, and the cat cats love avocado, but you got to be very careful with how much of it that they can uh, that they eat because they really do love it. Did you know that? It's a true story. Cats dig avocado. So do dogs. But you got to be careful with how much of it they eat. And you definitely can't let them get it. Because that's all bad. Uh, love to share. Thank you, Cindy. This is, uh, this is so if you've been around a boat long enough, this is the official uh, shirt of the uh, the captain of the lifeboat. Uh, a very, very talented 14-year-old squirrel. A very talented 14-year-old uh, uh, boy for, or girl, rather, from uh, Australia drew a really great caricature of me in this and that's what you see when you use the uh the emoji squirrel do not eat that kitty hey johnny skillville would you like to get a cat sorry this is uh this is what yeah cats uh, also will go after poinsettias uh, you got to be very careful at uh, that time of year for sure but the cat does obey johnny more than she obeys me which is a little bit sad you know the other thing that bums me out is Squirrel does not like it if I pick her up like a baby. Like, she just can't stand that. She has no problem whatsoever with him doing it. That hurts my feelings. She's purring and meowing and being happy, and and but she doesn't like it at all when I do that. She really, really bums out. Oh no, I have a. Uh, I I talk with Squirrel. I have had conversations with Squirrel like that since the very first time I picked her up, and I think this is a mistake. I have had this conversation. Um, did I just raise my voice at my cat? Absolutely, I did. That's poison. I absolutely did. If it was my child, I'd have done the same thing. Kind of like if they were putting their finger in an electric outlet. You know what I mean? Hey! That kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, you got to throw that out. Calhoun, you didn't hear that growing up ever, did you? Usually, it was right around the time he was getting ready to put metal into an outlet. I mean, you didn't really have to scream at my kid. You could get way quieter. He was way more effective. But if he was about to do something that was going to hurt him, trust and believe my voice got loud. The idea was I want him to realize whatever he's about to do has really got to not be done. But I do apologize if it bums you out. It is uh, St. Patty's Day, people. 
this is uh this is the day every year that when i come on the boat i want to i want to uh to celebrate saint patty's however all of the saint patty's days from my past you know it's it's just one of those days every year that i mean what do you i'm not trying to come off as being uh, but what do you think of when you think of saint patty Green beer, right? A lot of green beer. Um, at least that was a real big deal when I was growing up. <laughs> My dad did the I bet you won't get, do that again style of parenting. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I was, uh, yeah, green beer, Shannon, right? Uh, having freckles, you know something? I love freckles. And, and I don't know a guy that doesn't love freckles. Uh, Chicago's Green River, Taekwondo, well played. That's it. You know what? If you're from that part of the uh, of the country, no, that's huge. That that really is huge. I loved in uh, what was the movie Squirrel Nut Zipper. You naughty cat. You naughty cat. She knows. She jumped down as soon as she saw Johnny Scobo, and she was going straight for that avocado pit. Yeah, Calvin, he's got some. You forgot about St. Patty's Day. Oh, a little Aaron Gora. Oh, cat, shoulder. <laughs> the the thing with squirrel is she will jump on you as you walk by, and then you just have to put up with walking around with a cat on you. But amazingly, you may not believe this. She does not, she does not grip in. Ever if if you happen to to do something that you know what I mean? Like if her balance gets skewed or whatever, every once in a while she, if she has to grab, but she's very, very careful about it. It's impossible to count yours. Well, that's probably a good thing. I promise you, well, uh, Pat Wellness Coach, I promise you, it's going into dirt today. I, you know, here's the thing. I am the most overprotective cat owner on planet Earth. I get, I get messages like yesterday, Squirrel was laying near the pool. The number of people that reached out to me to tell me that Squirrel was number one going to fall in the pool and drown. That cats can't swim. Am I lying? You would not believe the number of people who reached out to tell me cats can't swim. Number one, the reason that squirrel is not afraid of that water is because we would never, right? Squirrel will eventually do something to fall in. Cats do that. And then she will be afraid of it. I would never do anything to put a cat in. I love, I love the, uh, the cat more than I love the human. And I sit here all day long working with humans who the rest of the world does not want to work with. And I promise you, I prefer cats. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty big cat fan. But that's, uh, but that's me. You love that video on Chase the Heat? I have a video of Squirrel that I've wanted to put up for such a long time, and I just, people, I'm not good at this YouTube stuff, but I got a, I got a video of Squirrel jumping. And... It is really, really slow, right? It is one of those, like I got it on super, super slow-mo and it is so incredible to watch her jump because she's going up onto something really high and she just springs and then her feet, like as she's flying through the air, her feet are doing this number to come, to come up so that it's, uh, th th I'm going to post it. You'll see it today, I promise. It's one of the most incredible uh, clips. Cats do rule my house. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not. Uh, I'm not at all bummed out about it. I uh, and my cat's my cat is the. Uh, you know, here's the deal. I've, I've I've made it pretty clear. This is my girl, right? I don't. Uh, I don't have a lady friend. That is my. Uh, that is my significant other right there. And do you know what my significant other is trying to do as we speak? You get. You got a zipper. Come here and be a good kitty. She's, she's testing the waters because cats are very, very funny that way. She's going to walk around and act like she's looking at the city. She wants me to think that she's not doing anything wrong other than just getting a fine view of uh, Tucson from the kitchen window. But she's a cat, which means that she'll wait a couple of seconds and she'll press her luck a little bit more. Yeah. But they are just superior animals. They're so much fun. He did post it on his channel yesterday, and, and she does it a lot. She has absolutely zero.
fear whatsoever of, uh, of the water. It's, um, it's almost uh, distract, uh, disturbing, but it, you know, my, uh, my sister's cat, my sister, well, it's actually my nephew's cat, but my sister's taking care of it. He's a chomp. And I mean, he is a chomp. Now he is an athletic chomp. Have you ever seen a cat like this? This, this bad boy has got to be squirrel nut. Don't you do it. This cat has got to be 20 pounds, every bit of a 20 pound pussy cat. Now this 20 pound pussy cat has the ability to jump through the air like a kitten, which is wildly impressive. When you see this, this cat hangs out on top of this, um, uh, the, the cabinets that you can open in your kitchen. This is where the cat spends all of its time on top of it. So it has to jump about four feet. And to see this massive animal fly through the air is absolutely incredible. It really is. But that big cat, I was going to say fat, but that's not nice. This very, very large pussy cat fell into uh, her pool. It was walking along the edge of the pool and it fell Bloop, right into the, uh, and after that, and which is odd, right? You wouldn't think a cat would fall into, some, but they, uh, they did. So I thought if I could just maybe set a camera up out there because the day is coming where unfortunately squirrel is going to, she's just way too bold. You know, the other day she was not looking at the water and walking toward it. And I actually caught her by the tail. What do you think? Squirrel? She's a trans squirrel little cat. She wants no part of it. No, she no, doesn't. She wants no part of it. She's not fat. She's just short for her weight. There you go. That's an interesting way to put it, right? Um, by the way, somebody the other day sent me a, a text that said, you know, in some cultures, thick is a compliment. You know what? It's a compliment in my vocabulary. It really is. Um, but if I'm trying to come up with an insult, right? I was trying to come up with an insult and I don't use a script. I was going on the fly. It was my way of showing people being catty. I'm sorry. I'm never going to choose the right one. Someone's always going to go, hey, you can't. That's not the right thing to say. I truthfully am just going to uh, begin to stop caring. You want to see something cool though? You ready? Check this out. Uh -huh. It is in Tell the truth. The truth is, Wes at the uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, when we couldn't come up with the lifeboat, Wes at the Department of Motor Vehicles said, Tommy, do you have an idea other than the lifeboat? I said, try the LB. I tried to bribe Wes, by, by the way. Oh, did you want to write? This really was one of the funniest things. So we're, we're in there, and Johnny's trying to get his driver's license um, on that particular day. He was an expired one. Yeah. On that particular day, uh, he didn't. He wasn't able to to, uh, to let Johnny do it. He had to go and get something else. But Johnny's like, "Man, you sure we just can't knock this out today?" I mean, I've had a driver's license today for a long time, and the guy goes, "No, no, you're at. You're going to have to go and get, uh, you know, get some uh, some more of the paperwork." And he's talking to him. <laughs> Johnny takes a twenty dollar bill that's folded up perfectly squared, and he's holding it in his fingers like this. And as I'm talking to the guy, you just see out of the corner of your eye this <laughs> these fingers with a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> He kind of leads it like this, leads it across the counter and goes, here we can't uh, take care of this uh, driver's license today. I almost fell down. I mean, it was so damn funny. I wish you could have seen it because poor Wes, there was this moment where Wes couldn't tell if Johnny was really trying to bribe him. Like there was this, this split second of, holy hell, this dude's trying to bribe me with a 20. And it wasn't even like he was going big, just the, and that's just how it happened. I'm talking to this dude and there's, you know, that you got the, He's on the other side of the, um, you know, of that sort of cubicle farm, and his hands were on the other side of the cubicle farm. <laughs> so as I'm talking, you just see the the hand on the other side of the farm come with the uh, with the bill. Oh man, it killed me. You would have you would have laughed hysterically. It really was funny, but this is my. Uh, I'm pretty pleased. Pretty pleased with my license plate. No, I just got to get a car to put it on. I have a car to put it on. I had to have it towed. It's kind of a long story. So glad you are live right now. Tell me, not going to relapse, but my mom is in a recovery meeting. Isn't until Tuesday. And I just got some of the most effed up news ever yesterday. 
the pet talk is healthy. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Um, and I'm glad that you just said that out loud, right? Everybody pay attention because what uh, Annika just said saves people's lives. I'm not being dramatic. When even if you're amongst people who are talking about staying sober and if you're around people who are showering everybody with positivity, if you sit and suffer in silence, you're going to get nothing, nothing out of what you do. For real, you have to speak up, right? The act of saying, this is how I feel, brings out caring of people around you. Capiche, you see all of those ones? If you're new to the boat, that is people virtually reaching out and hugging you. It is virtual hugging, right? For some people, that means that they're going to say a prayer to the God that they believe in on your behalf. For some people, they don't believe in God. And it just means that they're going to say, hey, man, we're here for you. And then there are other people whose beliefs vary from, right, casting spells to doing whatever. But here, the one represents whatever it is I believe that I can do to affect a change in someone's life in a positive way I intend to do on your behalf. Yeah, well, that's a beautiful thing. Even if it's just the fact that you know there's a bunch of people here who know what it's like to need one and to not want to take it, right? Everybody here does understand that. And that's a beautiful thing. It really is. Sometimes that's enough. So thank you for having the courage to speak up and saying I'm hurting because people who suffer in silence relapse. That's it. People that suffer in silence relapse. People that, that ask for help get sober, right? And I don't mean chemical free. I mean sober, walking around happy, right? Singing tunes, right? skipping, doing that uh, Katrina and the waves thing. And they get that Katrina and the waves reference. Come on, that's a good one. Off topic. If Tommy can be uh, Reese's boyfriend, can he be my big brother? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter how old you are, just identify as your older brother. How would that be? Hey, we got this. Don't trip. Don't trip. I got this. Really glad you spoke up. Really glad that you're here. And you know what? Tuesday's going to come a lot quicker than you think it is. And guess what? Peer support happens all day, every day. It really does. You just have to find the places where you can go and start to connect with people in the chat. I got news for you. Relatable Reese is not a sobriety channel, but get in her chat and watch people. If you say you're hurting, you're going to feel like you're on the lifeboat. I promise you. And there's a bunch of other channels like that. Why? Because we all go to the same places, right? Whether you're on the lifeboat or whether you're on Relatable Reese's channel or whether you're over on errands or you end up on anybody's live chat, you're going to run into a lot of the same people because we enjoy this format. One of the reasons we enjoy this format is because it provides connection, right? Our theory here has been always the opposite of addiction is connection. If you're sitting at home, right, and you're jonesing for a drink or you're jonesing for whatever it is that you want. Hold on one second. Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, my gosh. My heart... Uh, my heart bleeds for you, and I mean that from the bottom of it. I found out yesterday that my friend, who I last spoke to when she got clean just before giving birth, she and baby uh, daddy are locked up because the kid died of an overdose. My heart's broken. Thank you all. Um, Laura, I wish that was the first time I had ever heard that story. But it's not. It's not even the first time I've heard that story this week. I'm so sorry. But you know what? You're going to break that chain right? You're not going to be someone that allows something like that to happen in your life. And you're not going to be somebody that overdoses on this poison either. Sadly, your generation didn't get an opportunity to do the things that my generation did. The drugs that are in the, the uh, street, uh, on, the, on the street, in the drug supply currently, there's nothing safe anymore. There's nothing safe anymore. And unfortunately, small, small amounts of this stuff can kill an adult. So um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I really am. But you know what? I'm glad that you said this out loud, right? Because again, the more you let out, you're going to find, I'm not kidding, 
you're gonna you will end up typing it in in the next four or five minutes even if i didn't say it because it happens on every single show every time somebody has the courage to speak up about what's hurting them they eventually type in i actually feel better right The lifeboat meetings uh, keep me sane too. You are all the best. I'm so sad about it. Just more and more thankful uh, every day that I got clean when I did, that my daughter is healthy and safe. God bless you. Literally breaking the chain. Ah, I wish I had my, this is the, uh, this is the official participation trophy of the morning right here on the lifeboat, right? My gold one is in the other room. Annika, that is the biggest deal in the world. You understand that? There's literally nothing more important. When we talk about ripples, that's the biggest ripple on earth. Honest to God, what you're doing right now is more important than what I'm doing right now. You have the ability to wildly change the earth forever. Your daughter, not knowing any of this, right? Not going into that lifestyle her kids, their kids, their kids. This changes the entire course of history. I'm not being over dramatic. It's literally that big a freaking a, a deal. As wild as it is, it's that big a deal. You get that, yeah? How can you not? How can you not? Sweet tea, did I miss you? Did I miss you, sweet tea? If so, I really apologize. I love you. I really do. One of my favorite people. In fact, oddly enough, I'm drinking coffee to use that. Well, this is the million dollar question. And I'll be really honest. I'm going to answer this question. And I'm going to answer it in a show. And I'm going to answer it probably very close to the time where we're all going to be casting uh, uh, votes. And I'm probably going to run off about half the audience. I don't know which half because I don't know how this is, but I literally want to see the plan. I want to know, I want to know what they're going to do because as, as of this moment, the only thing that you can do, um, the only thing that you can do currently is not, has nothing to do with the war on drugs. It's the battle. And the battle is, Annika's daughter, right? She can absolutely control that situation. We need to do everything we can to control the situations that we can get control of, right? I can protect my cat. She's right here. I can't protect your cat. I can talk you into trying to protect your cat. I can tell you ways to protect your cat, but the only person that can protect your cat is you. I am the only person that can protect squirrel. Although my brother would protect her in a heartbeat, right? So would my son. Get a team of people together that are going to protect the ones that we can protect. Because in the interim, that's all we can do. Right? And the crazy thing is, just imagine if everybody in this country said, I don't give a crap about the war on drugs. But I'm not letting my kid overdose on drugs. I'm going to make my life's mission to be that my kid doesn't overdose on drugs. Nothing else. Right? My success as a businessman, my whatever, right? my hobbies. If the Giants win the Super Bowl, the most important thing in the world is going to be that I make sure my kid does not end up doing drugs. If every single person said, that's all I'm going to do, then there wouldn't be a war on drugs. The demand would be gone. When the demand dries up, so does the supply. They'd start banging a left and taking it to some other place or banging a right to take it to some other place. Granted, they're trying to kill us right now, but we do pay for it. And if we stopped paying for it, they'd ship it somewhere else. You know, plain and simple. Sadly, right? This is where we find ourselves. I was pregnant when I got clean. God bless you. So was my ex-wife. Um, I knew I had no business being a mom if I was still effing up. Uh, glad to be here and to be okay. It's a, a lot to process. I'll get through it. Thank you all for listening. Well, we're glad that you're here. We really are. We are really, really glad that you're here. Um, you know, my, uh, I remember when I was married, my, um, my wife went to rehab and was just a few weeks pregnant, found out when she got there and boy, you talk about grace of God stuff, but, um, 
she, uh, to her credit, never looked back. Never looked back, never, never had bumps in the road, none of that. Just has been an absolute rock. Nothing but respect for that. Gypsy Soul says, uh, can you get some car magnets and business cards with never quit quitting on them? Probably. We probably can do that. Um, I will talk to uh, to my merch guy today about that, I promise. Uh, someone I love is an alcoholic, and I would do anything to get him sober. He says he's ready, but hasn't uh, funds to go somewhere for help. Can someone give me info? He says he's ready, huh? Tell you what, Lori, um, send me an email and put in the uh, in the heading, right? Uh, my alcoholic friend needs help, right? And put a bunch of contact info in there for your friend. Everything you can give me, and we will reach out to your friend, okay? Question, uh, do you think the scanners at the uh, border are going to do much? I'll be really honest. I hope so. I, uh, I, think, I think that it has to be a holistic approach. I think that it's not, you can't, you're not going to pick one part of this and say, you know what, if we do this, it's a magic bullet, including the wall. There's no, there are no magic bullets. The purpose of the wall is to make it very difficult to get over in a lot of places so that you have to choke people through a one small area and it makes it much easier to guard one small area. Currently what they do is they overload the border in sectors, right? Because what they know is this, and you know what? Hate me, I don't care. When this president took office, he signed a crap load of executive orders and one of them changed how we do what we do at the border and laid off a lot of stuff. And now the people who are on the border, if you come across the border, when I apprehend you, I then take you in and do the paperwork with you. Now, if it's one or two people, it's not an issue, but if five or 10 come in, then literally that entire team will then go in to fill out the paperwork with these people. So the cartels put people wearing uh, wristbands that are color uh, coordinated. This is a business. The wristbands will tell you how much money you owe on the United States side of the border. So that when they do get to the U.S., their handlers will go, oh, this is a blue band. These people owe $10,000 for their smuggle. And then they're going to get that 10 grand somehow in the United States. I can assure you, you don't want to think about how they're going to get that 10 grand. Right? I don't think it's going to be working at Home Depot. But what they do is they overload 40 or 50 or 60 people in a second. And the second that they have to go and process those, they send through the packers. These are people with backpacks full of fentanyl pills. Now, if you consider the size of a fentanyl pill, right? Uh, if you're carrying a backpack full of them, you got any idea how much crap you're carrying? It does not take a lot to bring a lot of deadly across the border. Yeah. By the way, for all of you that would like to hate me, I think everybody that's coming here, right? I get it. And if I was in that country, I would be doing what they're doing. I would. It's not their fault. We created this thing on this side of the border. I promise. The problem starts with the uh, demand more than it does, you know, the supply. But the, the, the fact remains that we do more drugs than anybody on the planet, right? That's it. We are the biggest consumers of catch a buzz anywhere on planet Earth. Um, Loki, the SP dog says, my one goddaughter is strung out on fentanyl. Uh, at this point, we have all tried to disconnect from her and she has lost her three kids. Did we do the right thing? Oh my goodness. Uh, Loki, you know what? The, to say, boy, it's just not a question that anybody can answer. Is it? Um, I couldn't have done what you did. It's. This is a concept that a lot of people um, adhere to. And I'm just going to be really honest because it's the only way I know how to do anything at this point. Well, if you have somebody on fentanyl and you disconnect from them, they're going to die probably before the next time you see them again. 60% of the supply is tainted to the point where one dose can kill you. 60%. A two milligram dose of fentanyl will kill you. Six out of 10 pills that we have been capturing coming across the border have more than two milligrams of fentanyl in it. Okay. 
This is a very, very dangerous time. If your kid's a weed smoker and you want to do tough love, he's going to go couch surf at someone's house and smoke weed. But if your friend or relative is addicted to fent and you kick them out, they're going to continue to do fent. Turning the back does not stop them from doing fent. And the term tough love got really popular and really adopted back in the 80s. I know a lot of people who tough loved who no longer have relatives because they were found behind a dumpster, right? Or they were found wherever the last people that were with left them. You know what tough love is? Tough love is when you say, Calhoun, I'm going to your house today and I'm not leaving there until you're sober. You're not going to like me. You're not. But I'm putting this finger in your friggin' belt loop and I'm not taking this finger out of your belt loop until you're sober. So when you go in to take a dump, I'm going with you. No, and that's what we're doing until you're sober. But that's a tough proposition for most people. It's probably a lot less of a tough proposition for me, right? Because of the life I lived in where I've been. Loki, I don't blame the, the move you made. You understand? But the reality is, this is a uh, this is a drug that kills people eventually. Not it might. This is a drug that kills people eventually. And I'll tell you something. What I'm doing right now is tough love because this isn't a fun answer. I'd like to tell you that you did a great job. I'd like to tell you that they're gonna they're gonna be fine and they're gonna come back to you. But I'll be really honest with you. That's just not what happens when this happens. I mean, it isn't, and it's not your fault because they don't have a freaking handbook. And there's nobody that is even making an effort to try to help people through this. You know what I mean? There's $30 billion available. $30 billion with a B. That's what was allocated to fight this. But I don't know how the hell anybody gets at it, right? Because no one is. It's sitting there. But this is the kind of stuff. Um, oh, my God. You know what, Loki? Boy, I'm really glad that this comment was put up. Because number one, it's going to make my day easier. I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. Uh, it's not, and I respect that, but she chose a man who did something with a child and was already on Child Protective Services radar and lost her own kids. I'll be really honest with you. Um, yeah, not in the right mind, to be sure. But uh, to, that's that's cro crosses a line that I just, I'm sorry, I can't square with. I just can't square with. I know it probably there's something that says I, I understand. I think for most people, this crosses a line that uh, my compassion runs out. I'm sorry. But what I said holds up for everybody else, right? Tough love is uh, tough love is I'm not leaving you. Right? Now, in your situation, knowing what you know, I don't know that I could deal with that person. I'll be honest. I probably did it would have done exactly what you did. Keeping it real. But I would have done exactly what you did the day I heard about that, regardless of the drugs or anything else. I would have disconnected that day. And that's probably why you were disconnected. Right? I would have disconnected for that. I promise. That, that's something I will disconnect for. The drugs, I wouldn't. But uh, that other sin, yeah, I disconnected. That. That's me. And Shannon Smith says it best. Loki, I'm very sorry for what you're going through. Thank you, Shannon. And thank you, Loki, for popping your head up and, uh, and not suffering in silence. For real. Cup of coffee. Nailed it. Loki, you do what you got to do to protect in order to protect your family. There you go. Booyah. And that's that's exactly what it is. Right? First and foremost, you, you protect the kids. Everything else is academic. Right? You did the right thing. Um. Wow. Yeah, Charlie Mullins, thank you for all that you do. Charlie is, uh, just so that you know, two people. True story. Um, when you switch times on a, on a channel that you've had, Liz Ferris, good to see you. When you switch times on a channel where you've had the, uh, the same time for, for years, um, you don't sort of take to it lightly. And one of the things that I noticed right after we, uh, made the switch was I didn't see Charlie as often and I got, it made me nervous. You know what I mean? It really did. And I, uh, 
I went and said to, uh, I sent Charlie a text and said, hey, I'll switch this thing back. You know, if, it, if it's getting hard for you to get on here, I, I promise you people, there aren't too many people that uh, that the boat would uh, would do that. There's a handful of them, and Charlie is one of them. I love you, Charlie, I really do. He's, uh, you talk about somebody that has just been a rock, and, and all the early crew, but you know what? We uh, we went through growing pains, people. I don't know, you know, for those that, that weren't here in the beginning, you know, they tried to cancel us, and got all kinds of ugly, and there were just a core group of people that have been literally family. I'm not playing around that have been family. And Charlie is that dude. He really is. <laughs> when we make it to land, can we get a convertible minivan? That's an absolutely great comment. You know, Calhoun's got his thumb up. He's uh, absolutely over the top. I will tell you, Sherry, I was planning on actually doing a show. I was this close to getting Mindy, uh, uh, to getting Ma Q on the, uh, the lifeboat. Uh, so freaking close uh, to getting her on the lifeboat. And the sad thing is, I don't know what I said that changed it. I, somewhere along the way, I said something that, um, I don't know, but I was planning on doing a show where uh, she came on and the two of us were going to discuss his progress. I, he has heard him speak. I have not. And that's a man pride thing. He's still typing uh, in to, um, he's still typing in. He doesn't want me to hear, hear him yet. And, and I'm not mad at him, right? I, under, I understand. But his mom has heard him. And um, she said she's, uh, she's getting closer to the point where she can understand him. He has mastered several of the sounds. He is struggling with some of the others. The ch, ch sound apparently is something that he's, uh, He's struggling with, but you know what? Um, he's working out. His body's great. His mind's fantastic. He's really having to, to struggle through the speaking thing, but that's, he's going to be exactly where he was. It's like I told his mother, she, she does not have a clue how tough her son is. Truthfully. I mean, I'm not being disrespectful. She does not have a clue how tough her son is. But really, really a tough individual in the best of ways. I mean, that in the abs, because he is a, he is a very compassionate individual, but he's one of the toughest cats you'd ever want to come across. I promise. You're uh, getting that hair grown out of your cow? Ah, there's my kitty. Such a good cat. Really such a good cat. So I only want to do a little, because uh, we're getting uh, closer to the top of this hour. So I'm going to go over this one more time in case you rolled in halfway through this. Here's the we need to talk. Uh, we're going to continue to do cool things uh, between uh, myself and Reese. We like collaborating together a lot. We really do. And you all seem to love it. I get more um, comments, and so does she, on the shows that we do together than anything else. So either you guys just get real, real talkative after we do shows, or it's some of your favorite stuff. Um, so we're going to continue to do... Uh, I do too, JJ. I really do. And I understand where you're coming from. The five o'clock show was great. Sadly, it didn't get the vote. The vast majority of people uh, have an easier time making the other shows, you know, and, uh, but I'm telling you the, when this thing is fully finished out, you're going to be able to show up at any time and there's going to be a show on. That's where this is going to end up. I promise. I'm telling you. I've uh, I've looked from the other side. I've I've, uh, I've looked back as if it's already done, and this is a memory. And this uh, this channel will have content 24 hours a day for people who are trying to get clean, sober, or change their life. That's where it's going to. I promise. So we're getting there as fast as possible. There are things happening, um, and we are uh, working on that. But what I wanted to say is, we're going to continue to uh, the. I have two more hours to go on the first one. How would that be? Two more hours to go in the first one, and the first one will be up and running. Now, the first one is not Alice. So if, if that bums anybody out, but the first one is not Alice. That isn't how I started. Because I wanted to be able to get the first one up, and we didn't know how long Alice was going to take. Um, we, went, uh, we went with one of the other ones. But, um, yeah, I only have a couple of more hours to get done, and then it will be edited together. And I'm going to pop that thing up and see how it goes and see if you like it or see if we're going to have to put a little background to it as well. There's been some talk of putting um, 
Thank you, Izzy. Thank you. Uh, you know, there may be some background or there may just be my voice and we're gonna see which uh, is preferred once we get it up and running. That's what we're gonna go. Cheech Rhino. Huh, great name, man. Cheech Rhino. You gotta love it. Yeah, there was for the grace of God go, uh, you know, I, I love people that can see that. I really do. I love people that can see that. Uh, you know, the, the reality is that it's it's difficult in this day and age to come across somebody that has never done dope of any kind. They exist. Make no mistake, they exist. But they are absolutely the rarity. They're the minority. Um, the days where it was a small minority of people who tried drugs, those days are so far uh, are gone. Now, I believe, I believe that... Uh, if they don't get a handle on this opioid epidemic really quickly, right, then we are actually going to see a generation of kids who are going to be so terrified of drugs that they may not do them. For real. Uh, it only takes a couple of generations of kids watching overdose deaths. I'm not being funny and I'm not make, being flippant because you can watch this where it's happened in other places. You can watch where legalization has happened. And you allow people to just do whatever they want. In about two generations, they get the memo. The kids that have watched uncles and aunts and uh, older relatives make jackasses out of themselves. Um, you follow? It's, uh, it takes about two generations. And then people do the, yeah. You know. uh, Lori, you can send, send me that email to, uh, to Tommy Scovel. Just Tommy Scovel at Gmail. Please. Uh, Sherry, uh, Sherry Fullerton, uh, the watch keeps time and ticks. It just has not been uh, uh, brought in so that it's accurate. But I'm hoping that by Monday it will be. What a beautiful, beautiful watch. It really is. Absolutely gorgeous. I am so looking forward to uh, to returning that to you and, uh, and seeing that baby uh, in service. What, I mean, honestly, it, it was so cool to see one in real life. The, um, the, the very original Mickeys you just do not come across. And if you do, they're destroyed. Um, the, the way they made them, um, the bands got replaced very quickly. People didn't keep the bands. And that, and that was horrific because they had... Uh, Mickey on the band. Uh, so it's really, really rare that you see it the way that in the condition that it was sent to me. Honestly, I, I've never seen one in real life that was completely put together. And that one's not just put together. It's perfect. It's in such great shape. Like it was just put into a drawer and, and then never taken out. That's obviously what happened. But never tried drugs. I have to be in control, afraid of what would happen if not. I love that. Stay that way. Free speak, uh, free hiking spirit. Uh, see, the, what's crazy is this. And you know what? I'm glad you said that. This is an excellent opportunity to explain the difference between me and free hiking spirit. And I think this is rather important. To be honest with you, I think this is rather important. Um, I have to feel in control as well, right? And that's what heroin did for me. Without heroin, I felt wildly out of control at all times. If you ever saw me not on it while I was an addict, you would have known like this because because I look like a caged animal, right? I'm so uncomfortable in my own skin, right? That I look like, um, it, it's, it sounds like a joke, but it's not. Um, that people didn't know that I was addicted until they saw me sober. Because in order to feel in control, I needed a pain medication to make that happen. And that's, that's sad, right? But that's the difference. I mean, literally, that's the difference between addiction and, uh, and you know, someone who's a drug addict and someone who's not, is that the drug addict speaks the exact same thing. They want to be in control. They want to feel that they're in control. They want to feel like they, uh, they can control what's going on in their life. Now, um, simply, uh, yeah. You get the uh, you get the drill. You get the drill. Three hundred and seven of us, and two hundred and thirty nine likes. Do me a favor and fondle that like button. Oh no, go ahead. Or as Johnny Scoville would say, 
Rub it gently, but don't be afraid to sniff your finger afterwards. He's a dirty, filthy Johnny sniffer. Uh, drug experimenters uh, do them to get high. Drug addicts do them to feel normal. It's an excellent comment, actually. It made you feel normal as well. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. What do we got? What do we got? I may, people, hold on. All right, we got it. I have blocked the camera, people. If you're wondering why, it's because there is a long standing tradition at not only Chase the Heat, but at the lifeboat of not putting Mama Scoville on camera. You understand that this is a tradition now that goes back almost seven years. There has been uh, the occasional sighting. Sorry about that. There has been the occasional sighting, but here's some news. Are you ready? Mama Scoville has agreed in, in principle. My people are talking to her people, but she has agreed in principle to uh, come on the lifeboat for an interview. Uh -huh. Yes, you are allowed to respectively, uh, respectfully tip your hat to Mama Scoville. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I would expect uh, I would expect it. Um, now, she literally has agreed to uh, to do an interview on the lifeboat, which is epic. And the crazy thing is, I didn't even uh, ask. She actually said, "Would you have ever wanted to uh, interview me?" I said, "I didn't think that there was any chance in hell that you would do that." Um, Lori, the email address is Tommy Scoville at gmail.com. D-O-M-M-Y-S-C-O-V-I-L-L-E -L -L -E at gmail.com. Uh, Loki, this is, uh, it is a combination of a lot of things. For some people, uh, for some people, the fact that we inherit it from our parents is enough. For some people, it skips. I have, right, brothers and sisters or brother and sisters. And um, my sister's not addicted to drugs, right? Why not, right? Genetically, she's the same, yeah? Uh, we were raised in the same house, but Johnny and I are. So uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. And sometimes it's just, it's hit or miss. You don't have it. There's something in your brain that you simply do not have. Oh, what a great thing to say, Reese. You were here the whole time? You lurker. You, lurker, I can't believe you. Listen to your beautiful words, Tommy. I love you and I always will. Well, I love you too, Reese. I can't believe you were lurking. I'm a little bummed out, Anna Nicole. You could have popped your head up and at least waved high. You know what I mean? Like I do. I always, well, I don't always. All right, I take that. Back. Sometimes I do the exact same. <laughs> I really do. So maybe that's not. Uh... Yeah. No, I do that. Too. You're all right. But I'm glad that you're here. Mark Hartman. Welcome. Looking good and green. Looking good and green. Moon shadow. Moon shadow. Moon shadow. Uh, by the way, if I screw up the words to the song, it's because I'm trying to fit someone's name into it. If I screw up the character from a book, I might be doing the same thing. Okay. Every once in a while. Like, do you know we can't even drop the hyperbole joke anymore? We used to say, like, the hyperbole. We would drop hyperbole as a joke. But the number of people that get really angry and then correct us like we're stupid, I mean, it's it's actually kind of fun. Hey, guys, love you all. I appreciate the kind words. You know what, Reese? You've come a long way in the hearts of the people here. Cat Stevens. I sang the Cat Stevens song at my uh, sister's wedding. How about that? And I had hair. You should have seen me. I looked good that day. I really did. I was a youngster. I don't even remember how old I was, but I was young. I was, I was in my teens. Uh, no, I live with um, Spanx. Lives uh, in the same state, uh, in the same city, but we do not do not live together. Um, and Mama Scoville kind of tours the uh, the kids, if that makes sense. Uh, she goes from uh, from place to place throughout the year and spends time with uh, with her kids, which is a cool setup, uh, if you ask me. Um, as opposed to sort of laying roots down, but no, I'm. You know what, Reese? You wouldn't have interrupted it. In fact, what you should have done was just popped on. You do have a uh, 
she has a, a permanent um, invitation. You can always just pop on. But I want you to know, yeah, from my heart, I um, we met in person. You know, the two of us met in person, and uh, it was a it was a really uh, it was a beautiful moment. There's there was not even a um, there was never even a, a split second where she looked uncomfortable. And and I I know when people do. There's no way to explain it, but I know when people do. You can't imagine traveling from house to house, uh, Budika. Well, then don't set yourself up that way in retirement. You'd be miserable. <laughs> you definitely should get yourself set up with how you want to do it. Uh, doodle mom, make it a double. I think she should have popped up a little earlier, too. I, I would have been really happy to have you uh, stop on and tell everybody that um, that we're good. Sherry, what do we got? Somebody asked a Tommy question. What did I miss? What did I miss? Any idea, Calhoun? No, I don't know what I missed either, but. Uh, what was the question? I don't know. That was what I was trying to figure out. But I don't know. If you had, I want to be happy for the rest of your life. Um, at your wedding? What? If you want to be happy for the rest of your life. Ah, there you go. Just to see reactions. Get, get, is it a, get a fat woman to be your, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life. Get an ugly woman and make your wife, that's the one, isn't it? From my personal point of view, get an ugly girl to marry you. That's an awful song. I can't believe you brought that up. No, yes, we met in prison. Um, it was a different kind of prison, but that's sort of, yeah, no, we did meet in prison, so to speak, right? The, the big red button prison. Uh, no, I met Reese through A.A. Ron. Reese, uh, Reese and I um, met through Aaron. I was, if you're brand new here, Aaron uh, was doing the Danny Masterson case, and I came on as a uh, prison expert on the show Growing Up in Scientology. Uh, then went out and met some uh, second gens. Um <laughs> We met in the pen. <laughs> uh, she was in the shoe for shanking her celly. Um, I was in there for running a sports book. Um, oh, that would have been, I want to tell you something. You know what? I have said many times on this show that I never would have slept with a prison guard. I would have slept with Reese if she was a prison guard. There you go. I said it. Uh, no, I was, that was something I was terrified of. I, uh, I don't know if I've told this story on the, uh, on the boat before but when i was in the state prison i had a single cell right uh i was a mentor in a in a drug program i was getting paid to, to you know 30 bucks a month and a single cell to run classes and uh, it was uh the doors didn't they were sliders right they didn't open this way they just slide and what you would do is take a can from a can of chewing tobacco and you would put they call it a puck and you would put it on the magnet that helps the door stay locked and the doors didn't lock and they were cool with that they had no problem with that they had no problem at all with uh, our doors being open around the clock because there's nowhere to go anyway and we'd play cards or whatever but it was just the six mentors who were allowed out and i had about 90 days left on my sentence and i woke up to someone sitting on my bed no that's a terrifying thing in prison and I rolled over and it was a female prison guard. I'm not kidding. And it was, there was just that moment of, I mean, horror. I was terrified. What state do I live in? Um, confusion, usually. Uh, you know, that's my normal, my normal state, I think. Arizona currently. Um, so I said, what are you doing? She said, I want to talk to you really quickly. I said, get out of my cell. I'm like, get out of my cell. I'm going to start screaming at the top of my lungs. I was a reeking scared. I really was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I would be scared to let you. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I would want uh, Reese handcuffing me. And uh, it's not that I don't trust Reese. It's that I don't like handcuffs. Yeah. I, uh, do you know that that 
I don't know if I told this uh, on the boat before. I had a, uh, there was a, um, somebody has mailed me um, handcuffs and they were actually, these handcuffs are from the federal system. This was from a guy who worked at the feds and he just said, these were, these came off of the Con Air runs. These were the, they weren't a personal set of cuffs. They were cuffs that are used for the plane. Now, very often, instead of taking those cuffs off, they'll see you go and the whatever you're transferring to will just throw 30 sets of cuffs if they take 30 sets of inmates. So they kind of go around the entire world. But the guy said, uh, I took these home on the last day that I worked. He said, I just forgot them and took them home with me. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Uh, Fuzzy cuffs? Uh, no, you know what? Here's the, here's the crazy thing. So they actually make these things they call big boys, right? Or Frankensteins, because if your legs are so big that they can't put regular cuffs around your ankles, <laughs> they use these leather things and they're padded on the inside, but they look just like what you would strap down, you know, Franklin. And uh, yeah, I, I had those used before. And they're very comfortable. Like those are probably the most comfortable cuffs in the world. But they also make these cuffs. Like if you're just doing this for entertainment purposes, right? Yeah, I'll just purr about the boat. Um, Cherry wants to know who made the first Mickey watch. Um, the first Mickey watch was made by uh, Ingersoll was the name of the company. They were later to, after a couple more name changes, they were later to become Timex, the Timex Corporation. But uh, Ingersoll was the name of the uh, the original. Now, there were some non, there are non-approved Mickey watches that may have come out before that. But the first, like, no joke, this is an approved Mickey watch was made by the people at Ingersoll. Yeah, big boy cups, because yeah, if your wrists are so big. But it was very cool that that somebody mailed it to me and just said, I thought, you know, I, I walked home on the last day of work with these. I thought you might uh, want to have them. I mean, the odds that those cuffs were on somebody I know is really excellent because of the number of people I know that have been through the uh, feds. It's kind of weird. Timex has done one. There, the number of watches that Rolex has done one, the number of watches that uh, companies that have made a Mickey watch, we could do it for literally till the end of time. It, you're, you would be a lot, you'd have a much easier time doing the watches that didn't make a Mickey than you would watches that did make a Mickey. That's for real. And even the watches that you can't get a, a, a Mickey on, right? Like if you had a, a, a Richard Millet, right? Richard Millie, a Richard Millie watch. You could get somebody. There was a guy out there that just takes watches and makes some Mickeys. Like you could buy a $400,000 watch and have it turned into a Mickey watch. And there's the guy who does it gets paid obscene money to paint uh, characters onto watches. I don't know. It's never, I, I, I have a dozen Mickey watches because I'm a collector, but. I, I'm not into Mickey's the way other people are into Mickey's. I love the one that was mailed to me. To me, that is because it's the Mickey watch. All the rest of them are just other, other Mickey watches. That's the Mickey watch. Or if you could get one of the ones that Walt Disney gave to the animators, right? All of the animators that worked on the original Mickey were all given um, Rolex watches and they have a Mickey on them. Now they pop up all the time. They're not it, it sounds like something that would be really super rare, but there were a bunch of animators. So they pop up for sale every once in a while. Um, and that would be cool, but it also was not put on the nicest. I'm not bad mouthing it. It's just, it was not put on the day date, right? It was put on the Air King. I like Air Kings, but they're not the most expensive of uh, references. You you watched me uh, one day on S uh, on surviving the survivor I bet because I think STD would be sexually transmitted diseases although Lori that could have been the case kind of got wild in the eighties there were a few years there that you know you know Calvin back me up on this surviving the survivor though as I bet where you saw me I love 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 um, the uh, surviving the survivor. Love it. I uh, I love the crew over there. I love Joel. I love COE. I love Joel's mom. You know, just really. <laughs> uh, 
SDS, there you go, surviving the survivor. It's a, it is a great group of people. I, I've said this before, but when I, uh, when I ate that Valium a couple of weeks back, three weeks back, um, Joel instantly called me, you know, instantly. He said, uh, you know, can I do anything to help you? Where, where are you at in your head? You're all right. Um, I, I respect the, the, uh, the crap out of it. It's, you know, I've been on a lot of creators, uh, channels but not too many creators reached out to me after that to see if i was doing all right um and that's impressive we reese did obviously um but i would have been shocked if reese didn't i am a huge fan of pocket watches i own 100 i don't know maybe more i have a lot of pocket watches huge fan huge fan and they're so much fun to work on. And they're also, we have gotten to the point years ago, researching a pocket watch was impossible. Now it's a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you if you take good pictures of that watch, right? Take really good pictures of that watch. I can tell you everything you ever wanted to know about it. I promise. Very, very simply. Um, yeah, Mara, send me an email. I'm sure I've got my keys. Yeah, I do have my keys for sale. I've always got my keys for sale. You know, Knight Rider, this is another thing I hear a lot, right? There's a bunch of people that say all the time, I've got, uh, I have my relatives' watches or this or that. You got watches uh, that you want someone to take a look at or whatever. We can do it in photos. Yeah, I'll take a look at watches. I love that, you know? And if and if you ever mail me one, like that Mickey that I got, you know, hey, uh, this was in my grandfather's uh, watch drawer. You know, you can have it. I couldn't take that watch. I promise I'm not built that way. That watch is... I watch is a rarity and it is a beautiful timepiece. I'm stoked that I'll be uh, able to be a part of its story. I get the thing going again, but I wouldn't have kept that. I'd have been a real scumbag if I did too, I'll be honest. Uh, very often this happens. And you know something? My industry is disgusting this way. I The reason that I did as well as I did, I moved here from uh, from Nevada. And the reason I did as well as I did there was because I just had a very different way of doing business, right? Watches are incredible because a guy can go into the, what what we see more than anything is guys that were in Vietnam that would go into the PX, right? Where you could buy stuff duty free, tax free or whatever. <laughs> they would go in and buy Rolexes, right? That was a big deal back in, in Vietnam. And a Rolex was $75, $80, which was a lot of money. <clears throat> but Rolex had not exploded because Bond hadn't started wearing them in movies. And it really had not gotten to be the big thing that they were going to be. but you know, you talk to those guys, you bought a watch for $80 and you still have it today, right? And you say, yeah, I got the box, I got the papers. It could be worth a million dollars. But to a guy that's 70 something or 80 something, he dropped 80 bucks on it. And guys take advantage of these people every, all day, every day. It just happens all the time. And my deal was I would just meet people and say, hey, that watch is worth this much money, right? It's worth 50 grand. I can't give you 50 grand and I wouldn't be able to make a living. But here's what I could give you. And normally, though, you know, nine out of 10 times, what I always say is, but before you do that, go shop me around with everybody else. Don't tell them what I offered, nothing. Just go in and do it the same way you did it with me. Because I know they're all going to try to rip the dude off. And then most of them would come back and go, yeah, I'd rather deal with you. Uh, Sushi Full says, after my father died, my son found his gold pie pan 53 Omega Constellation. We didn't know it was valuable, but my son did. It's gorgeous. Um, I brought, I bought my brother a uh, Omega Constellation pipe. That's the uh, the watch that I gave my brother Johnny for his birthday. It's his birth year. I got him a '66. I know the '53 pipe pen. I know that watch. Like, I, I probably know more about watches than I know about anything else. I'm kind of a of a watch freak. That's uh, it. Really, is a passion. But the pipe pen um, is uh, it's. Probably one of the most iconic watch designs ever. Uh, really, uh, it, it was did wonders for Omega, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a it's a great watch. Um, am I good? No, I mean I'm not. Um, no, uh, you know the boat's never going to go away. 
It's not. Eventually, I'm gonna. That's the reality. You know what I mean? That there's no way I can do this forever, right? But that is a beautiful sentiment. But the boat's never gonna go anywhere. I promise. Um, it, it will. It will uh, evolve. You know, and and it will change over time. And you know what? There'll be somebody else that sits in this chair after me. And there'll be somebody that sits in that chair after them if we do this right, right? After he or her or she or him or whoever is in the chair after me or all of the people that are in the chair after me. The idea of what we're doing here is I promise bigger than uh, than me. Yeah, trust us. We got this. I promise we're not going to let this go away. I promise. You've got my word. Um, yes. Wow. There's another beautiful freaking sentiment right there. huh? Boy, did they nail that one or what? I am the captain, and I definitely got this thing moving that direction. But um, this is, uh, yeah, I'm definitely bringing up the uh, the the crew that is going to uh, to take this puppy over, and I'm going to stick around until I can't. Right? I'm not trying to to get out of here. I just, I'm uh, I'm struggling with mental um, with uh, you know mental stuff that just happens to people as they get older. It's happening to me a little bit more. Right? So. Um, the family watches to me are just sentimental value. Night Rider, I love that. Um, but I'll tell you this like today, I'm wearing this is a Girard Pirigo. I, I bought this, uh, this was a watch from South America that I bought that didn't run and I repaired it. It is a uh, absolutely love it. Very, very basic. It's uh, was made in the 30s. It's just beautiful. It's just a really, really basic kind of a, of a beautiful watch. But every single watch I own. Right, except one is for sale. Bryce was right; all of them were for sale, except uh, the watch I got from my dad. Well, you know, I would never get rid of that. One. Other than that, they're uh, they're all for sale. And the reason that one's not for sale is because it's not mine; it's Calhoun's, and I'm just taking care of it until uh, you know the time comes that he puts it on. It's kind of how that works, right? With really nice watches, you don't own them; you just take care of them for your kid. He takes care of it for his kid. You know, they actually built these puppies. To run forever, which is a really interesting concept in a world where things are made to actually break, right? Um, no joke whatsoever. You know, these were made to run for an eternity, and that's really, really odd. It really is. So, people, I'm going to be doing another one here this afternoon, I promise. The goofy hands go backwards, Tara. I know this watch. Are you trying to find one? If you're trying to find one, you send me an email. I know exactly where uh, where I can go and find you one. I promise. But I know the I know the watch you're talking about. It was only made uh, two styles of goofy, and one of them they go backwards. Kelly, he's doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, I talked about it a, a, a little earlier in a little bit uh, more detail, but the bottom line is he is doing considerably better. Uh, and he, although he is not speaking yet, he is going to his uh, classes. And then if I know him, he is sitting in his cell, drilling until his throat won't let him try anymore because that's who he is. Yeah, it really is who he is. Is Cricket in here? Cricket, good to see you. All right, folks. Tell you what. Thank you very much, Shelly. I appreciate that. I will give uh, Q your love, I promise. And this right here, this spoiled little diva is a cat in a basket. Oh, she's spoiled. Look at that spoiled animal. Must be nice, right? Tough work if you can get it. That is the, uh, hey, Tampa B. Good to see you. One of my favorite people. Glad you're here, Tampa B. Um, and now I got to go watch uh, Cricket Show because I don't want to think that that, that would, I missed something because that sounds like it was a good one. She is a beautiful kitty. Thank you. Love of my life. All right, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and I will see you on the next one. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.